Alright, man, let's go. It's been a minute, man. I always say that, but I ain't capping. I got into it with my wife, you know what I'm saying? You know, when you married, you know what I'm saying, like as long as me, 14 years, you ain't finna have great days every damn day. We went at it, nothing major. I ain't trying to get all personal. But the reason why I'm saying that is because when we got into it, she tore my scripts up, so that set me back a couple weeks, you know what I'm saying? I had a lot of shit I was finna drop. I had to just scrap them because I didn't want to redo them. But she didn't get to my um, October Fest, what I'm doing. Sawtober. I got a documentary I'm coming out with the Saw franchise next month. I ain't finna spoil it because it's not about that. But that's next month. She didn't get to that. But some other scripts she got to, so I had to scrap them. I, ha I had a good replacement, which is today's list and today's countdown. And it's ranking all 12 Friday the 13th franchise movies. Now, I got to say something about this. This is not Freddy or Saw for me, meaning I love it. I don't care what the fans or media base think about it. Movies I love, I don't care what people say I love them. This is not like that. I never really was a big um, Friday the 13th guy. I was never was a big um, Freddy, I mean, Jason Voorhees guy. I just wasn't. He the guy, he's nice, but he, it just, he never did it for me, but he do got some movies that I fucking love, and y'all gonna be shocked by this countdown. So without further ado, ranking the 12 um, movies of Friday the 13th, worst to first, and y'all know how I do. Remakes, they damn near always last. So kicking this off at number 12, one puff, let's go. The Remake. I was hyped. I said this before another countdown before when I was ranking videos, but I was hyped about this because we was getting remakes from every franchise horror franchise at this point. And Friday the 13th follows suit. The movie, I went to the movie theater and seen it, and I wish I didn't because it was nothing that I remember from it after leaving. Like, generic characters, generic plot. Nothing about none. Nothing about the kills that had me like, oh, that kill was kind of good, even though the movie was trash. Because he can have trash movies, but three or four amazing kills. This didn't do none of that for me. I'm not getting into the cast in this franchise at all either, because they all generic, and there's so many different damn Jasons that it's like nobody relevant but Kane Hodder. I'm mentioning him because he played, I think Jason started in part seven and he played him in like five straight movies if I'm not mistaken, but he played five for sure. Kane Hodder the man. He up there with Freddy or Tony Todd or, um, you know, the legends of horror. He up there with them because him as Jason is also some of my favorite movies. Moving on. At the number 11 spot, I got part five, and this is the new blood. Now, I got to look at my notes a lot for this, because I can't freestyle this. I know the franchise, but not like the damn back of my hands. So let me check the notes. All right. This is the second installment of the um the Tommy Jarvis love storyline with dude. I didn't mind Tommy Jarvis. He was cool, but... This is the movie where Jason kind of officially went from it ain't his mother, it's not a bag man, he's flat out killing motherfuckers supernatural, teleporting, he can't die from a shot or a knife or getting hung, he's just here to stay forever now. This is the movie that started that, with the resurrection and all that shit, but... Overall, I, I I ain't really critical or hyped up about none of these movies because this franchise to me is D-level. I'm going to be honest. I don't care if this sounds harsh or whatnot. When you doing a horror channel or horror franchises, you got to cover Jason because he's that iconic. But the movies, they don't speak for themselves. Just him and the kills. Moving on. Number 10. I got part four, the final chapter. This is when they realize we ain't Michael Myers. Damn it, um, Freddy done hit the scene and started taking over and box after box office. His numbers was matching Halloween and Friday the 13th. Like, put they box office money together, it still wouldn't equal the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise when they was dropping. So they said, this is it for him. We killing them off. And, um... The movie is just like they trying to kill him off the whole movie. Like this is supposed to have been the final chapter for real. And 
kayfabe or real life but it didn't happen and like i said i'm not bringing up the cast or the characters or nothing because none of this shit is rememberable every 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 movie is horny teen i mean we know these are 20 year olds playing teens but they horny teens titties and ass all day niggas think they finna fuck and they get hacked up by jason it's nothing Nothing about these countdown that I'm finna get in depth with until it's the ones that I really fuck with. Cause this franchise is just, that's why the body counts so much. The thing about Halloween is he can get nine kills, but five of them gonna be important. Like five of them gonna be characters you somewhat care about, cast members. This movie be having like 14 kills. You don't give a damn about none of them. Moving on. Number nine, I got Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Jason lives, and again, this is gonna be a quick. This is gonna be a quick um ranking because, like I said, I'm not big on this franchise because the characters are stupid. The characters aren't likable. Jason having his way, and then he gets stupid at the end. It's nothing that I could think about this movie that's different from the remake. Really, they all the same to me. Like I said, until I get to the ones that I really fuck with, but. This is where it's at just strictly because maybe I like something in it that I didn't like in the other ones. Moving on. Number eight, I got part two. And part two is just like every part two for every franchise, for every genre, not just horror. If part one of a franchise, Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, whatever, Harry Potter, well, they was going to have eight regardless. But you know what I'm saying? Any franchise that have a, excuse me, I'm looking horrible on camera and I need a cut. I'm sorry about that. Whatever. Any franchise that have a great part one or over exceed expectations, part two coming with a bigger budget. This part two didn't do it for me because now it's like we know for a fact who the killer not going to be in this one but who is it going to be in this one and the, um the bag man it just didn't do it for me moving on part three now i kind of um getting into the ones i, I ain't going nitty gritty my catchphrase that ain't caught on yet this ain't nitty gritty because these movies is just a little better like the best movies is just a little better than the worst ones but part three i did write a few notes and it's key because this is when the hockey mask was introduced they knew that bag shit wasn't gonna work that's like a 70s slasher kind of movie well he discovered the hockey mask on a humbug i don't remember he got the hockey mask in this this was 3d effects at its finest for the 80s i got that um what else i put the Pamela Voorhees reveal at the end of this one, that was pretty, like, I guess they did it in the first one. But this one, this was a pretty good one. Because now, in my opinion, in my heart of hearts, this is the movie that I identify as Jason. The like, This is like part one for me, personally. Because this is the Jason who we know. The hockey mask. The, you know the one-piece mechanic outfit, similar to Michael Myers. The machete or butcher knife or whatever he choose to use this particular kill. This is the guy I identify as my Jason. Moving on. Part six. I mean, number six, Friday the 13th, part one. Normally in my list and countdowns and rankings, one for a franchise is damn near top three at minimum. At minimum. I just did a recent countdown. My mind ain't going right right now. I just did a recent countdown where that number one was actually number one and i think it was halloween if i'm not mistaken maybe i am check the um check my old videos and see which one i have for my ranking countdowns but yeah number one i got this at number six because it's not scary at all it's not i like the music i like all that the movie good it's not bad like from this point on six to um one to me none of these movies are bad like the previous six where some of them was bad some of them was good some of them had good moments these next six are all good movies to me i fuck with them all but it's not scary and for me personally the reveal that this old ass bitch killing these young athletic youth teen campers just i just wouldn't buy it like i could see if all of her kills, Pamela Voorhees, the reveal was great. But if all of her kills was come behind you, slit your throat, or they actually fucking and she kill him, 
then it makes sense. But she got kills that take strength, strength that she shouldn't have as an old me a 50, 60 year old lady. And it just, when you when a reveal come out, it's great. But when you think about it and rewatch it, it's like, you seen this old bitch coming. We didn't see her coming as the viewer, but you saw her. How you let her overpower you? That took me out a lot. And I'm already not a huge ass Jason guy. Moving on. Number five, Jason X. To me, the body bag, the body bag, I mean, I said the body bag. The um sleeping bag kill is the, the franchise's staple number one kill. That's like the reverse bar, bar uh, that's like the reverse bear trap and saw franchise. The sleeping bag is iconic, legendary, I get it. But he fucked that up in this. He had the double sleeping bag kill, banging a girl in the sleeping bag against the other girl. That was a higher level to me. Secondly, the cryo mask freeze where he put the lady head in the cryo mask and froze her out and busted. Then the crazy Jason X with the mechanical face, best mask. He going hard in this. He got some people in there that shoot him down before he even become um, the, the Jason X. But this movie good as hell. They couldn't do nothing else with it past the first nine movies but go to space. This movie good as hell to me. It's cheeky. It's look cheap at certain points. But when I was watching this, I don't give a fuck what the diehard Jasons who know more about it than me have been watching it from the beginning. I like this one a lot more than what people would normally say. And that's why it's where it's at. Middle of the pack for me, closer to the top. Moving on. Number four. Jason goes to hell. Normally when I be having controversial lists, I know it's controversial because I think it's controversial and I agree the majority of a diehard fan base or stan base won't see it that way. So I say, don't shoot the messenger, don't kill me, but I got woo woo. Because I know it's kind of controversial and I agree. With this, I don't give a damn how nobody feel with this countdown or less. Because like I done said two or three times and I ain't going to say it no more. I never was a big Jason guy. I never was a big Friday the 13th franchise guy. So the way I like the movies is different from other people. Completely. I know a lot of these movies trash. And I don't care. But the ones I like is the ones I fucking like. And this motherfucker, he going hard and Jason goes to hell. And the thing people hate about it is it's not Jason to like the last 10 minutes. But I like that aspect. The movie start off where they like, all these years of these bodies he done collected for Crystal Lake. Let's set him up for one kill and kill his ass and try to do some research. I thought the military would have been done some shit like this by now. Instead of trying to, instead of trying to rebrand Crystal Lake or, or make it a new name or erase him from the history or something. Like, let's take care of this and see... Are these final girls and boys crazy? Or is this really a mad entity that can't die? So I like that aspect of his entity and his soul and his heart being transferred. It got a little goofy with the, basically the, the knife of Dumbala at the end and all that shit kind of lame. But the movie good as hell to me. And, um... It still got Kane Hodder. If you got Kane Hodder in it, you're going to already be over movies that don't got Kane Hodder. For me, personally. Moving on. Now we in the nitty gritty. Now I can honestly say, we in the nitty fucking gritty. These movies are the movies that I like compared to like other franchises. And we're going to start with Friday the 13th Part 7. My nigga Kane Hodder. I call her the um, Carrie girl. This is the new blood. This is the first movie in the franchise history that I felt we got our Nancy here. We got our Andy Barkley here. We got our final girl who really legitimately can fuck him up. Like she teleporting. She mind fucking shit. She got the chandeliers coming down, the rope wire choking him. Like she ain't a bitch who fucking and get slashed or not having sex and survive just cause of that reason. She actually coming at him with physicality. Shit that he ain't never dealt with. The movie is just like all the other movies as far as the other aspects. It's eight or nine beautiful men and women, teenagers, getting slashed up, separating. Three niggas get killed. They say, hey, what happened to John? I don't know. He's at the boat side. They go to the boat side. John dead. And then Jason come out and killed him. We know the storyline. I don't care about that. I just like the final girl because she 
was the best of the franchise to me. It wasn't no, she survived in Final Girl just because somebody got to survive as a Final Girl. You could physically see she a fucking weapon. Smoke break. I be telling myself, I'm too. When I rewatch my videos, I'm too loud. I'm too animated. My girl be like, "Man, I hear your voice all damn day, my whole life. I damn don't want to hear you on YouTube. Calm down." So if I hit the blunt or hit the pen, it might calm me, get my voice a little back. I gotta control my breathing a little better. That shit, all oh, I ain't gotta tell y'all about. That's just shit I gotta do on the low, practicing. Moving on to the number two. If you know the franchise, you know the list, and you know what you're talking about, and you know what you know, then you know. Freddy vs. Jason. I don't give a damn how nobody feels. This ain't going to be controversial. Or how you put a movie with Freddy in the number two spot? Would you put Freddy vs. Jason in Nightmare um, franchise number two? Hell no. Because this is low ranking compared to Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. They got four or five movies better than this one. But for Jason, they don't. Period. You got Robert England. Y'all ain't even have Kane Hodder in this one. I said that already in my Freddy countdown and all of that. But this fucking movie good as a bitch. I'm talking about the movie, the storyline, the hit myself, making people forget about Freddy. So he go to the depths of hell and dream world to come up and find Jason. Jason dreams, still dreaming about his mom. Sort of kind of scared of water, which don't make sense because he swam in my number one movie of this countdown and he done been in water and drowned so we know that was his human deformed kids fear maybe so i guess it translated to his entity jason Voorhees, the killer mask guy's entity of that was his only fear ever in life so that's gotta be his fear what jason played upon i mean freddie played upon but I don't care about that. You know, people hate Kelly Rowland with her cheesy acting. Some of the actors are not memorable, but they way better than a normal Jason movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, this movie good as hell to me. Like, I watch this movie like every blue moon. I mean, it ain't got to be Halloween month, which is coming up. I watch this movie like four times a year. It ain't near how as much as I watch Saw franchise or Freddy's, but I watch this movie sporadically because it's kind of like a Freddy movie to me. Moving on. The number one movie in this countdown list. I'm going to be honest. This is controversial because this is basically last on every countdown I've ever seen. So I can acknowledge that. People hate this movie, but I fucking love it. And this Jason Takes Manhattan. I told people already... I don't know why I like it, but I I don't know why people hate it, but I know why I like it, and I don't know why I like it, but I really do know why I like it, and why I like it is because I remember R.I.P. to my auntie, Gloria. I used to live with my auntie, I was probably like 1920, I wasn't no young nigga either. Right before I got me and my woman met each other, I was living with my auntie. She had like so many classic bootleg VHS. That's what I'm saying, you young millennials who may see this. Y'all don't even watch DVDs no more. Everything is streaming online, Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix. You don't even get DVD players no more or see them in Walmart as much because everything's streaming. But she had so many classic VHSs and, and, and DVD and not DVDs, VHSs and cassettes to play on a VCR. Google a VCR, youngins, if y'all see this. Google what that is. That was before it before, you know what I'm saying, DVDs and after Betamax. My point is, I used to just pop in some of them old movies, old 70 pent movies, the Mac, old gangster movies from the 80s and 70s and 60s, see what she used to be. And I seen that um, the cover, it had the Jason Mass over Manhattan Backdraft. So when you put that movie in, the opening monologue narrating, Jason's in town, you're going down. They show New York at its scummiest. We know New York a beautiful, most beautiful city in the world. But they showing pimps, they showing gangs, they showing dirty alleys and rats and sewage buckets. They making it look like not like like the city horrible, but like the the Gotham version of it, the 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 dark, gritty, horrible part of it. But the damn movie negative part is they only in Manhattan for about five or ten minutes to find a whack. But I don't care. 
the movie set in the Crystal Lake. Where the fuck Crystal Lake get this lake that goes straight to Manhattan from anyway? Oh, that shit don't make sense. I don't care. That's when you want to be so smart. You want to be a, a film critic. You didn't make no motherfucking movie. I'm talking to you YouTubers. Y'all never made no movie. Y'all never directed no scripts. Y'all never wrote no screenplays. But... Y'all watch movies and critique them and make motherfuckers like cinema fans and shit. I love cinema fans. But y'all do shit to make motherfuckers not like shit and kind of make opinions based on all y'all steady opinions. Because sometimes I could hear some reviews. I, if it's something I want to really see, I won't watch it because the, the YouTubers will spoil it and have my opinion based on how they feel. So when I see it, I'm thinking about what they said. This is that situation. If you ain't watch Manhattan strictly for yourself, you would feel like all the YouTubers and it's horrible. They ain't in New York. Woo woo. But I'm telling you, I watch this movie like a marathon. I watch this movie so much. This is also when Jason is starting to teleport. He getting mad kills. He vicious. He ferocious. He ain't got no chill. And I'm telling you. That's why I think this is number one in my heart, because all the other movies I've seen them here and there, Blue Moon, whatever it may be. This movie I have full access to, and I used to pop this motherfucker in for no reason and just watch it. And it never was boring to me. It always was good to me. And that's where I'm going to end it. I'm not going to go deep, deep, deep on some more other shit, because like I said, Jason is cool. He's top five, no doubt. He's the guy. He got probably the biggest body count ever, but it wasn't my cup of tea. Overall, he iconic. He legendary. I respect him. If he come out with a movie tomorrow, I'll go see it. But until then, ZZ the King. I'm out.